Hey guys, welcome back to Hemlock Ridge. Today we're going to be talking about batteries and what battery is right for your off-grid application. We're going to be taking your traditional sealed lead-acid battery, putting it up against a lithium-ion phosphate battery, and we'll talk about the pros and the cons of each on today's episode of Hemlock Ridge. So it's great to be back here, way back in the woods, off the grid, and be able to just go ahead and flip a switch and have power. That's all possible because I'm storing the energy I collect from my solar panels in batteries. And there's a lot of things you can do with batteries. There's some nuances if you're in an unheated structure versus a heated structure, uh, what you're planning to use, how much energy you're planning to use. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about batteries and what the differences are, the pros and cons of each. And since it's such a nice day out, let's go ahead and do it outside. Glad you're here. Welcome to Hemlock Ridge. So a while back, I made a video on DIY cheap solar for your off-grid structure and application. And I've received hundreds and hundreds of comments on that video. Some of them positive, some of them not positive. A lot of people telling me, hey, you could do a much better job. But the purpose of the video was to show you how you could do a cheap solar system with the minimum requirements to get power back to your off-grid cabin, your shed, your barn, whatever it might be. One of the things a lot of people told me is you've got to upgrade from a lead acid battery to a lithium or a lithium ion phosphate battery. Now, one of the viewers was actually from Power Queen and they said, you've got to tell your viewers about lithium ion phosphate. It's come a long way in the last few years and really, can bring some great benefits to an off-grid uh, solar power application. So I'd like to thank them for sponsoring today's episode, and we're going to really dig into all the differences between these two types of batteries. Now, the first thing to know is that we've got two different batteries here. We've got a traditional lead-acid battery. This is also known as a flooded battery. This is very similar to the battery in your car that starts your internal combustion engine. Uh, however, this is a sealed lead acid battery, right? So it's it's more sealed than the, the one in your car, which you can, you know, refill, refill with water and things of that nature. Um, over here is a lithium iron phosphate battery. If you go back to high school chemistry, remember Li, lithium, Fe, iron, PO4, phosphate. This is a different chemistry. It's not a flooded battery, and it's got um, a number of unique characteristics that the lead acid battery does not. First and foremost, I am comparing a 200 amp hour battery right here to a 100 amp hour battery. So that's the difference in size. Uh, the 100 amp hour battery, very similar in size to the lithium iron uh, phosphate battery here as well too. The big difference though, if I'm comparing apples to apples is the weight. The lead acid battery weighs almost 70 pounds. Conversely, the equivalent 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery is only 24 pounds. That's a huge difference, especially if you're gonna be using it in your RV, in your boat for your trolling motor or carrying it around. Big difference, 24 pounds versus 70 pounds. Now, if you haven't seen my original video 
on creating a cheap solar system for your cabin. I'll put the link down here in the description. I put that whole system together for only a few hundred dollars. There's the old saying though that sometimes the cheapest solution ends up being the most expensive solution. And when you talk about batteries, I think that's really true. The lead acid battery has a lifespan of about two to three years. Take that to the lithium ion phosphate battery, which can last up to 10 years. So you're gonna to need to replace your battery maybe three times if you're using lead acid, which gets really expensive. And you'll be able to uh, use the same lithium battery for, for close to a decade. The other big thing with these batteries is capacity. And I don't think I totally understood this initially. And, and a lot of you have reached out on the channel and, and giving me an education, some uh, politely, some not so politely. Your lead acid battery, this is a deep cycle battery, has a depth of discharge rate of about 70%. Some people say you don't wanna discharge your, your battery more than 50% if it's lead acid because it's gonna shorten the life, uh, the life. So if you take a 100 amp hour lead acid battery, that's roughly 1200 watts. And if you use that 50% guideline, you're only getting 600 watts of capacity before that battery has to be recharged so that you're not shortening the life even more prematurely. Conversely, the great thing with lithium ion is it's got a 100% depth of discharge. That means if you buy a 100 amp hour battery, roughly 1200 watt hours, you're gonna be able to use all 1200 watts. So while the lithium ion may be a little bit more expensive, if you look at the amount of energy you're able to store and use in that battery, it can be almost double the capacity of your lead acid battery. Now the differences don't stop there. Let's also talk about the number of recharge cycles. Um, a lead acid battery can only be recharged maybe four or 500 times at most before it can no longer absorb the energy and it stops working efficiently. Take the lithium ion battery, 4,000 charge cycles. So right there, eight times the amount of charge cycles than a lead acid battery. The other difference you wanna be aware of is lithium ion can be charged much faster than a lead acid battery. A lead acid battery can be charged at a rate of about 10% of its capacity. A lithium ion, you can charge at 50% of the capacity. That's the amount of juice you can put into the battery at one time. And the reason for that is because they have different absorption rates. Lead acid doesn't absorb the energy as fast. Lithium ion can absorb the energy much faster. Here's the really big benefit of that if you're off grid, especially if you're gonna to need to run your generator from time to time. You could take a uh, charger, put it on your lead acid battery, and it might take 10 hours to charge up. Conversely, you could put a higher power charger on the lithium ion phosphate and maybe get that 100 amp battery completely full in two hours. That's really big because when you're off grid and you start up your generator, if you're not getting uh, solar because it's snowed out or there's a storm, you don't wanna be running that generator for hours and hours on end to recharge your batteries. Being able to have the generator on just for a few hours and be able to take your batteries all the way back up to 100% capacity is gonna save you a lot of fuel and a lot of wear and tear on your generator. In fact, I've even seen some other off-grid setups where in the winter, they're in such snowy locations, they have zero solar and they just charge their batteries every single day uh, with the generator few, for a few hours and that keeps them juiced up until the next day and it works really, really efficiently. So let's talk about safety for a minute. Um, sealed lead acid battery, you definitely wanna use sealed if you're gonna have it in an enclosed space or inside a cabin or a, a shed or whatever it might be because of off-gassing. Even the sealed still lets off a little bit of off-gassing. You have none of those issues with lithium ion phosphate. The other thing um, that is really important, sometimes lithium gets a bad rap in the news. Um, those are lithium ion batteries that are made with cadmium. It's a different chemistry. Lithium ion phosphate is extremely safe. You don't need to worry about it overheating, exploding, like some of those other lithium ion batteries that you see in electronics and e-bikes and things like that. Uh, in addition, uh, these units have a battery management system installed. It's a circuit controlled uh, system that monitors the batteries for overheating, overcharging, short circuiting. So you have a much safer battery when it's hooked up to your solar system uh, or your inverter and your off-grid setup.
Now let's talk cold weather operation. This is the one asterisk that I will put out there for anyone who's considering lead acid versus lithium ion phosphate. Um, the benefit is that lithium ion phosphate actually performs better in cold weather environments. It discharges slower, you lose less capacity, there's, there's less of a, uh, a decay curve uh, with the lithium ion phosphate uh, than your lead acid battery, which is going to draw down much faster in cold weather. Uh, also sitting, it's gonna lose its charge much faster. Here's the caveat. If you are in a cabin, an unheated structure, whatever it might be, that goes below freezing often, you cannot charge lithium ion phosphate below freezing. It will damage the battery. You can still use it well below zero, but you cannot charge it below freezing. So if you're going to be in a location that's unheated and it's um, going to be below freezing most of the time, um, you may need uh, lead acid because that you can still charge below freezing. Otherwise, if you have a lot of sun and it's below freezing, uh, some people will buy uh, special heaters that you can wrap these batteries with. Some batteries even have onboard heating elements, but you're going to need a lot of sun because that's going to draw a lot of energy just for the battery to keep itself above freezing. The other thing is if you only go below freezing once in a while, you can buy a charge controller that will monitor the temperature, shut off charging when the battery is below freezing, and when it warms up and it's above freezing, it'll resume charging so it's not damaged. That's pretty much the only possible disadvantage that I can think of why you wouldn't want to go with one of these batteries. Let's talk price. That's the big question probably everyone's asking. So again, I'm going to compare a 100 amp hour lead acid battery to a 100 lithium ion phosphate battery. Uh, the cost difference between the two, the lithium ion phosphate right now might be about $100 more. But remember, that battery is going to have eight times the amount of charge cycles. It's going to last three times as long, possibly a decade, versus the lead acid battery. And it's also going to give you so much more capacity because of that 100% depth of discharge where you can use all of that stored energy in the battery, not just the 50 to 70% in your deep cycle flooded lead acid battery. So over time, the lithium ion phosphate battery ends up being a much better buy. Now, I want to thank Power Queen again for sponsoring this video. Um, I've learned a lot. I've checked out their company. They've got great reviews online. Um, and if you are in the market for a lithium ion phosphate battery, this is one of the more cost effective solutions. And it also is a very good quality product. Now, if you think that this might work out for you and your application, I've went ahead and put a link right here, also a link in the description. If you use that link, you will get an additional discount plus free shipping. And they have all sorts of sizes uh, from your standard 100 amp hour battery that would fit in a camping trailer or an RV to something larger like this 200 amp hour uh, battery to rack mounted four kilowatt watt hours uh, of power that you can set up as well too. These can be run in parallel if you need to uh, get a few of them together. I think it will support up to four in parallel, but they have a number of different configurations based on the amount of power that you need to store and pull off of these batteries. Now I have to say, I am pretty impressed with this battery. Uh, first of all, it's, it's a pretty handsome battery, um, really well made. The case is uh, good quality. It's not cheap plastic. It's, it's very, uh, a great shell on it. It has integrated handles uh, that make it really easy to maneuver. It's got rope handles, which you can disconnect as well too. M8 connectors uh, to be able to uh, secure your power leads into it as well. And uh, again, uh, the, the weight, it is so light uh, for the amount of power. I mean, this battery here has almost 2.5 kilowatts of power that it can store and be used um, out of that battery in a package that only weighs uh, you know, not very much. Now there's a lot of applications for lithium ion phosphate. The first thing to know is it's not a starting battery. Okay. So you're not going to put this in a, uh, a vehicle, a tractor, a boat and start the engine with it. Um, but it's really good for running a trolling motor in your boat, a lot lighter than the lead acid battery for that capacity. It's going to work great in a shed, in a barn, in a cabin, whatever it might be. Uh, and for camping, uh, lithium ion phosphate is starting to be used in solar generators. 
It's also gonna be great for your house batteries in your boat or your camper where you've got solar, you're recharging them, you wanna get the full capacity of the battery and not add a lot of weight um, or any kind of uh, fire hazard as well too. So I am pretty impressed. This battery comes with a five year warranty, customer service, and not only um, is it built well, but I was pretty impressed with what comes in the box, uh, which is a quick start guide and instruction manual and a really nice uh, waterproof container that is resealable that you can hang that with um, in your power supply room as well in the future. Now, optionally, Power Queen does make a charger and a number of chargers that you can pair with these lithium ion phosphate batteries that are going to give you that quick charge technology to be able to charge them up much quicker so uh, you're not really running your generator as long as you might need to uh, for hours and hours. So let's go back. We'll put it in the cabin, power it up, and see what we've got. All right. Got the new battery in, really easy, just a matter of hooking up the leads to it. It's showing about 90% charged. I haven't even charged it yet, so I'm gonna let it sit. Right now I'm not getting any sun because uh, the roof is covered in snow, uh, but I'll come back, you know, hopefully in a week's time after the snow melts and we get some sun and we'll see how much it charged up. Well, thanks again for watching today. Hope this was informative. Um, love being able to share what I'm working on so that hopefully you can use these tips and use it for your projects as well too. Um, I will put a link in the description to the original video when I showed how I set up this entire solar powered system for the cabin. Um, also, if you think this battery will work out for you, again, I'll throw that link in there so you can take advantage of the discount. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope to see you back here next time on Hemlock Ridge.